It's Halloween night. You look at yourself in the mirror after putting your costume and makeup. You smile. What you see terrifies you. The costume is creepy and realistic. You head out with your friends to hunt for some candy. When you are done trick-or-treating, you head home. As you begin to enjoy your candy, you suddenly feel a sharp pain in your mouth. When you look down, you are petrified. The legends are true. There's a needle concealed inside your candy. Our first legend is about razor blades or poison hidden inside Halloween candy. For many children, Halloween is one of the most anticipated nights. They will dress up in spooky costumes and just walk down the street collecting candy from the friendly neighbors. However, there is a legend of a malevolent person tampering with Halloween candy. It is said that they have put razor blades, needles, poison, and even pins within the candy. And while most of these stories are untrue, there have been a few cases where this actually happened. Like in 1959, when a dentist named Dr. William Chang, he decided to candy coat around 450 laxatives, and then he just passed them as Halloween candy, making a lot of the kids sick. Five years later, around 1964, there was a lady named Helen Field. She was tired of teenagers coming to her house trick-or-treating, so she just started handing random objects and in between them, there were some ant buttons that contained arsenic. The worst part is that her own teenagers were trick-or-treating in the neighborhood. A decade passed before another incident happened. In 1974, Timothy O'Brien, he went trick-or-treating with his dad and some friends, and then he got headed home and started eating his candy. And in between the candy that he ate, he ate a pixie stick. Unfortunately, it was contaminated with cyanide. Tragically, he actually lost his life, and the worst part was that later, it was found out that his father was the one who tempered with the candy. His father was known as the Candyman, and he was found guilty and sentenced to death. Then in the year 2000, there was a 14-year-old kid that he went trick-or-treating with his friend, and when he started eating his candy, he all of a sudden felt like something poked him in the mouth and then he saw that there was a needle inside his candy. When the police did an investigation, they found out that a man named Joseph Smith had actually tampered with the Halloween candy putting needles inside them. We all know the majority of Halloween candy is considered safe. However, there's annual stories warning parents that are reported in the news and kind of keeping this myth alive and making parents wonder that maybe these stories are true. So for me personally, when I came here to the United States, I was in my 20s. So before that, I didn't celebrate Halloween, but I do remember kind of hearing these stories probably in the news, like back then I didn't pay attention. But now that I have kids, it's kind of like in the back of your mind. You know? You're kind of always checking to make sure there's nothing weird in the Halloween candy. Our next story is called Stingy Jack. And the legend goes that a long time ago in Ireland, there was a man named Stingy Jack. And he was known throughout the land to be very deceitful and to drink a lot. One faithful night, Satan himself overheard of the tales of Jack's evil deeds. And he decided to go investigate himself and see if the stories were true. Jack, as usual, he was drunk and wandering around when he encountered Satan himself. 
he realized that the devil had come to claim his soul. However, Jack asked Satan if he could have one more drink before he went to hell. So Satan took Jack to the local bar and they started having a lot of drinks. And Jack, being the stingy individual he was, he didn't want to pay for his drinks. So he pursued Satan to transform himself into a coin. He said, hey, if you transform into a coin, we can pay the bartender. And then when he is distracted, you can change back into your original form. Impressed by Jack's cunning, Satan agreed. Once Satan has transformed himself into a coin, Jack cunningly just put the coin in his pocket next to a silver cross and prevents Satan to change him back to his original form. Eventually, Jack released Satan with the condition that he could not claim his soul for 10 years. 10 years passed, and Jack, once again, he crossed the path with Satan while he was in the forest. Jack for sure knew he had come to claim his soul and take him to hell. And again, he just made one simple request to have one apple before they went to hell. Satan agreed. However, while Satan climbed the tree to retrieve the apple, Jack started putting crucifixes all around the base of the tree and trapped Satan once more. Satan was absolutely furious and he demanded to be released. However, Jack insisted that Satan promised to leave him alone and never claim his soul in order to obtain his freedom. Having no other choice, the devil reluctantly agreed. So no longer after, stingy Jack passed away and he tried to go to heaven but they wouldn't take him and instead he went to hell but the Satan being true to his work, he refused to claim Jack's soul. And he just cast him away into the darkness with the burning ember from the fires of hell to light his way. So Jack decided to carve out a turnip and created a lantern with the light of the ember given by the devil himself to guide him through the eternal night. The Irish begin calling this ghostly figure Jack of the Lantern and eventually just Jack o' Lantern. I really like this legend. First of all, it's kind of telling you to be a nice person and be kind in order to go to heaven and not to try to deceive the devil because then you're going to be in a place in between in complete darkness for the rest of your life. But it's also kind of telling you the story of how the jack-o'-lantern was created, which I really find it fascinated, especially because I like all the Halloween decorations. So I really enjoyed this legend. I really liked it. Our next legend is about a creepy clown statue. The legend goes that one night, a teenager girl was babysitting while the parents went out for dinner. So she bathed the kids and she put them into bed. And after they were sleeping, she went to the living room to watch some TV. Then she noticed something kind of odd. In the corner of the room, there was a clan statue. Now, the clan statue was super realistic and very creepy. And she thought it was a Halloween decoration. The unsettling appearance made the baby city feel super uneasy. She tried to ignore it, but she felt as though the clown's eyes were watching her. And every time she looked at it, she felt like he had slightly moved. Suddenly, the phone rang, making her jump. It was the mom trying to check to see how they were doing. So the babysitter said everything was fine she bathed the kids she gave them food and she put them to sleep and she was just watching tv and at the end of the conversation she asked hey can i cover the clan statue because it's actually really freaking me out there was a long pause from the mom then she urgently said go get the kids and run to the neighbors i'll call the police 
we do not have a clan statue. Unfortunately, by the time the police arrived, they were all dead. The clown turned out to be a convicted murderer and cold-blooded killer who has escaped from jail. It's an alternative version to this story, where the babysitter and the kids actually ran to safety to the neighbor's home and the police successfully apprehended the creepy clown. This legend, I feel like it's the perfect scene for many horror movies and there probably are plenty of movies that have been based on that. I personally don't like clowns and maybe it is because when I was a little girl, I was watching the movie Eat with my sisters and my cousins and then my older sister and my cousin decided to prank us and they went outside of the house and told all the breakers of the lights off and the house went to complete darkness and me and my younger sister were trying to get out of the house and they had locked every door and we felt like we were stuck in there for what felt forever to us. So I particularly don't like clowns and I don't think I will babysit in a house that there's one and I even feel like it's probably gonna be creepy for little kids. Our next legend is the spider wig. And the legend goes that there was once a girl that she wanted to go to a Halloween party and at the last minute decided to make a costume with the things that she had around the house. So she checked in her closet and she went to her mom's closet and she couldn't find anything. She then asked her grandma if she could go upstairs to the attic and look in there. Once she was in the attic, she found all these old things and eventually found this dusty old trunk filled with clothes and wigs and she went through it and found a black dress and a wig that she decided to put together to make the perfect wish costume. Then she applied her makeup and she just put her dress up and she thought she looked amazing in this homemade wish costume. After being pleased with her creation, she just set off to the Halloween party where she had fun with her friends and she started dancing and talking. However, after the night kind of went on, she started feeling like her head was itching, almost as if there was something crawling in her head. And since it was the first time she was wearing a wig, she thought it was normal. Soon after, she was talking with a friend when her friend had a blood curling scream. She pointed to the girl's head as spiders began crawling out of the wig, going down her face and her neck. Now the girl, in a frantic reaction, just ripped the wig out of her head and threw it on the floor. And then hundreds of tiny spiders were coming from the wig, scattering all around the floor, and everybody started screaming in panic. Don't even say the girl started pulling in her hair and scratching her face to try to remove all the spiders from her. Sadly, she had to be physically restrained because even after the spiders were gone, she kept scratching herself to the point where she was bleeding. Now, this legend, I can totally relate to that girl because I probably would have done the same where I would try to keep scratching because I might still have that lingering sensation that something is crawling on me, which is very unsettling. And I'm pretty sure that if she didn't have a phobia for spiders, she must definitely have one now. Thank you for being my plus one. I hope you really enjoyed this episode. If you have any ghost stories or legends that happen to you and you would like to share with us, or if you like drawing or sketching and want to show us how any of these legends look to you, please send it to us at ivanplus1 at gmail.com. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope to see you next time.